morning, all. Good morning. Uh, Pastor Roy here and... Pastor Bo. Yeah, we're going to get this down sometime. I don't, some way or another. That's we really right. wanted you to see the, the communion table being decorated for uh, Thanksgiving. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Thank, thank you all who did that. Not only that, but we want to, for all of us to kind of be in the Thanksgiving uh, um, mindset as we're thinking about worship today and the worship of the coming week. Tuesday and night. Tuesday it's, night. Uh, seven o'clock is our community Thanksgiving service here. Uh, and uh, six o'clock, if you want to come and be a part of the choir. And Ken has said, come at six. If you haven't been a part of the choir, that's cool. You can come and, and it's a, a well-known song that you'll be working on. And so that will be... Uh, combined choir that, at that time. Yes, and uh, since we're talking about a uh, season of Thanksgiving, one of the things that we do as a church, uh, we serve the uh, families that uh, are uh, coming uh, through uh, Morning Star Mission here in Joliet. Right. And these are families that uh, have lots of kids and with uh, Christmas coming around, there are lots of needs and the cold weather and everything else. So a lot of the Stars of Hope, uh, um, gifts that uh, you, you can pick up on, in Hoffman Hall or just call the church office deal with clothing uh, needs for, uh, for these families. So I want to encourage you to, uh, to pick one of those uh, Stars of Hope, call the church office. Delivery for that is December 4, if I remember correctly. Yes, it is. And uh, we're running a little behind the curve this year. So if you would sort of uh, put that on the front lobes and uh, participate early early and often on that right yes yes okay. <laughs> this this is this is really where, where that applies that's right uh the oasis group is getting together on uh december 2nd and that will be at uh, 6 30 p.m and so you'll see more information about that and so you ladies remember that also uh advent decorating will be uh the Saturday coming up, yes, after, just the one after Thanksgiving. The one after Thanksgiving, and it's a, it's a beautiful uh, service, a project that we do here that benefits all of us during the season of Advent, Amen. beautifies the sanctuary, but even more, it helps us get into the spirit of Christmas. I love decoration, but there is so much more to it because it, it, it helps you kind of focus on Christ, even though in many ways you go decoration and it works, trust me. Well, it's, it's relational. Yes. So it means we look at the Lord working in each other's lives and, and it's cool. Yes. And, and it's hard to believe that this sanctuary can be any more beautiful than it already is, but it really does give it that wonderful pop yes. sort of when you walk in, you go, ooh, mm. and you feel it. Yes. Also next coming week, you should receive a, uh, a devotional from us uh, for the se season of Advent. So definitely I will encourage you to pick that up and as we're starting our journey uh, to Bethlehem for, uh, for you to, uh, to join us in praying, reading, and uh, meditating about the promise of God. Yeah, I think that, I think we are almost there, aren't we? I, I think I so. think we got them. And so uh, uh, do read your uh, Wednesday emails when it comes out, and uh, that'll help catch you up also with what's going on. And uh, this I think we just need a prayer for, for the beginning of the service, and we're good to go. All right, let us pray. Lord, thank you for bringing us together. We thank you for this, your church. We thank you for this, your family. We ask you, Lord, to be with uh, Bo as he preaches. We ask you, Lord, to be with the rest of us as we prepare our hearts to hear your good news. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The Lord is with you. Let us worship. Let us worship the Lord. Our call to worship is, O God of eternity and time, we thank you for our time and for those things that are yet possible and precious in it. Daybreak and beginning again friendship and common ministry, your word of forgiveness, the song of Christ in our souls, and your life within us. We praise you for the truth in love which pulls us forward in the long march of your kingdom, for the sudden gust of your grace which rise unexpectedly in our day, for the mysteries of loving, for music, for silence, for prayer, for the opportunity to worship you. God of all, we give you thanks and rejoice in your presence. Let us worship together.
can keep your lights off. Thank you so much. Okay. No, just... All righty, I brought my light too. I felt left out because you know what? You guys had lights and I did not. But then I remember every time when you come in the sanctuary, you see the Christ candle up there, don't you? And it's a great reminder to all of us that the light of God shines in us. And I want to say thank you to you today, you can sit. Thank you to you today for reminding us that Jesus lives in us and everywhere we go, we shine his light. So all together, we're going to put our hands together and we're going to say a quick prayer. Are we ready? Lord, we thank you for your light. We thank you for your love. Let it shine in us. Shine bright. Shine bright. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Now you guys can go to Sunday school class. Thank you so much. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the way you care for us. We are reminded again this time of the year how dear our lives are and how much you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for... Uh, the goodness of the nation that you placed us within, along with the challenges that you call us to be responsible. Lord, we ask you to be with, with our church family in this time of transition, as you've already prepared for the next uh, senior pastor. May we continue to pray for the, the pastor nominating committee and the rest of the folks who are working there, and may you bring us together. Lord, we ask you to be with our church family. Uh, we ask you to be with Stella Jerkovic and with the uh, her health, her health. We ask you, Lord, to be with Rich Poole as he's continued to recover, and also for Keith Farr. Lord, we ask you to uh, be with Donna Hudak's family as she passed and as they're putting together uh, plans now for her memorial service. Uh, Lord, we ask you to be with uh, the friends and family of Dr. Demon, uh, former husband of Claire, and uh, after his recent passing. And Lord, we thank you for the continued health and recovery of Nikki Wheeler Reiser and her family Graham, uh, her baby Graham. Lord, we ask you to be with all the concerns of our hearts, those uh, issues that we carry with us daily, those uh, of our families that we're concerned for, and we ask you, Lord, to be with them uh, as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the time of thanksgiving, and this is the time when we remember what God has given to us, and so as we receive the offering, we pray that you will uh, give as the Lord urges your heart and your participation and your gratitude for everything that the Lord has given you. Thank you. 
Testament lesson is Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 20. I will be reading from the New King James Version. This passage is in regards to the prominence and the superiorities of Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, on this Thanksgiving season, we express our gratitude for your word to us, for not leaving us without resources, but with the Bible. In James, you promised us wisdom if asked. Please give us all understanding to discern the truth of this passage. Thank you for your clarity, encouragement, and the hope your word brings. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 20. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of over all creation. For by him all things were created that are on heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning of who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, to him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. This ends the reading of God's Word. Thanks be to God.
Good morning. The message today centers around celebrating uh, Christ Sunday. Uh, and uh, especially we're going to focus on um, the wonder of the cross. You know, as you are reading the Gospel of Luke, there is this passage in Luke 23 that uh, speaks about Jesus' last moments on, on the cross and the interaction with the crowd, but also the interaction with the two thieves on the cross. So with that being said, let me pray. Lord, we ask that you will open our hearts to, to hear your words for us today. In your name we pray. Amen. The word of the Lord comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verses 33 to 43. When they came to the place that is called, that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right side and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leader scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Uh, let him save himself. He is the Messiah. If he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The, so the soldiers mocked him and coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. I'm sorry, I'm having a little troubles, trouble with, uh, with my device here. So, the soldiers came to him, offer him sour wine, saying, If you are the king of, of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, over his, the cross. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deranging him saying are you not the messiah save yourself and us but other one rebuked him saying do you not fear god since you are under the same sentence of condemnation and we indeed have been condemned justly for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds but this man has done nothing wrong then he said jesus remember me when you come in your kingdom he replied truly i tell you today you will be with me in paradise this is the word of the lord for us a few weeks back as we gather around uh, the beatitudes in our study group on wednesday night uh, the question of salvation came up and more specifically who deserves to be saved um, can a hard a uh, hard-hearted criminal be saved. Our group at some point uh, seemed to be divided on that answer, with some saying Jesus can save everyone, while some questioning the fairness of it. The text to, that we read today is a challenge to all of us, especially on understanding, on the understanding of mercy and who deserves mercy. We all need to come to terms that what happened at the cross is crucial in this, uh, uh, in, in this conversation. And that moment at the cross changed the world and even more it continues to transform the lives of people even today. If we are to travel back in time to the place that was called the skull, we'll see a desolated place far away from the center um, uh, market, uh, far away from the temple, the steeples, with no beauty. Quite contrary, the outskirts of the city um, is literally the garbage heap, the place that you would avoid in your walk into town. In this place that looks like nothing, uh, close to a throne room, we see the Lord crowned as a king. A crown of thorns and an inscription uh, placed abo uh, above his head that reads, this is the king of the Jews. In this place, mockery and cynicism are the music of the coronation ceremony. 
in and yet this place is filled with mercy with love and forgiveness that is the wonder of this place that is the power of the cross that is the character of god in full display so why do we have such a hard time embracing the cross in its fullness why do we look at the king and his action actions and yet we leave from his presence unfaded by its wonder maybe it has to do with the attitude of our hearts with who we are in a relationship to Christ are we so caught up in ourselves that when we see a display of mercy <coughs> we are just as good as the religious leaders that mock Jesus saying he saved so many let him save himself or are we so down in our sin that we believe there is no redemption left in the world just like the criminal on the cross this may be the hardest part of our faith to understand to understand Christ's love can embrace all it is not us but Christ it is not our mercy but God's mercy it is not our way of receiving people but the heart of the Creator that welcomes his creation home and maybe that is the biggest issue with Christianity today this misunderstanding of the type of kingship our misunderstanding of what kind of King Jesus is and the way we receive his rule in our hearts let us familiarize ourselves with the king again in this day i would like to read again the colossians passage that you had uh, you you heard earlier uh, this time from uh, the message uh, translation colossians chapter 1 verses 15 to 20 we look at this son and we see God who cannot be seen we look at this Son and see God's original purpose in everything created for everything absolutely everything above and below visible and invisible rank after rank of angel of angels everything God started in him and finds its purpose in him he was there before any of it came into existence and holds it all together right up to this moment. And when it comes to the church, he organizes and holds it together like a head does a body. He was supreme in the beginning and leading in the resurrection parade, he is supreme in the end. From the beginning to the end, he's there, towering above everything and everyone. So spacious he is, so expansive that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. Not only that, but all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe, people and things, animals and atoms, get properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmonies all because of his death his blood that poured down from the cross i really do like this reading of of the word more in layman's term more in um our day-to-day -day language that speaks so profoundly to who Jesus is so I, I have a few questions or maybe conclusions that I want to share with you today um, and they have to do with who Jesus is so many times we ask ourselves who is Jesus and we come to to different understanding 
For some, yes, Jesus is king. For some, Jesus is God. But for some, Jesus is an historical person. And if we are to say that Jesus is a historical person, we have to to come to, to the understanding that Christ is the history. And from before the creation and all the way to the very end of it, Christ is. If we are to set our hearts on understanding God, we have to go further than asking the question, what would Jesus do? Um, and we'll have to, to, to ask the question, what will God do? Because too many times for us, we have this lesser understanding of who Christ is. Yes, we say in our theology, in our doctrine, that uh, Christ is God. And, uh, but somehow, I feel that we are missing the fullness of Christ's life on earth. One more thing I want to share with you. If you are to wonder where God is today, you will have to look at the church today and see Christ's presence. For many of us, faith is more than just a walk in the park. It's an up and down struggle, right? And uh, there are times when we're trying to understand how is God present in our lives? Where is God today? You know, when, when there is um, something really bad happening in in in, uh, in our world we we are very quick to ask the question where is god what what happened if if god was god and if god was full of mercy where is it today and i still say if we are to 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 ask that question we have to be also ready to to look for god in in our world through through the church, through the people that believe in God, to the people that every day go out and and carry with them Christ, not just on a little crucifix on, on a chain, but in their hearts, in their deeds, in everything they they do. If we are going to try to understand mercy and forgiveness. We have to, to look at Jesus opening the paradise to, to a criminal in a boundlessly gracious fashion that far exceeds what was asked of, of him. I want to say more about this for, for a moment here, if you allow me. Uh, as you read the scripture, the scriptures, you 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 understand the notion that God is a good God, that God looks with mercy, with love to all his creation. And somehow we miss that. We miss it because we put everything to our own understanding, to our own paradigms, right? And we have to, to be able somehow to change our way of thinking and understanding the world with God's eyes. Jesus opened the paradise doing so much more than he was asked for. That is a gracious king. If we are to understand his kingship, we'll have to search our hearts and in old-fashioned way submit our wills to his. Now, I understand this might be a little hard because we are human beings and it's not easy for us to to be submissive is not easy for us to just put down everything that we are but this is the wonder this is the 
the amazing thing in the kingdom of God is that when you accept Christ as king, your life somewhat, somewhere in that submission becomes so much more. If we are to understand the gift that the king is offering <coughs> to us on this day, we have to come to accept that the cross is his throne. And before that throne, those deemed unrighteous by our sinful nature may share in the salvation of the righteous. Today we celebrate Christ the King Sunday, a day where we proclaim Christ is the Messiah, the Savior, that His kingdom is everlasting and that His love is the rule of that kingdom. That is what we do through our words, through through our worship. We proclaim that Christ is King. The only question I have for you today is, is Jesus your King? May we all find mercy in Christ's kingdom today. Amen. Taste it so 
So 